2020 has been a massively record-breaking year for Star Citizen funding, with just this year raising over $73 million so far. But it's actually a lot more than that even. Star Citizen seems to have gone into overdrive where its funding is concerned since CitizenCon 2019. Anyway, COVID and the global lockdown seem to have not hampered hype and funding of the game. In fact, quite the opposite. Star Citizen is making more money than it ever has month on month, year on year. I wanted to talk about some interesting numbers and figures, like how much Star Citizen has made from its recent Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2950 event, and how much the project has raised in total, because it's actually a lot more than what they show on the funding tracker, which currently sits at 334.5 million USD. D. So, please prepare for at least a moderate amount of wild speculation. This is not an accurate account audit. We are estimating and assuming a lot here, but we do have a reasonable amount of sources and it's not too far off the sort of beaten path. It, it looks like uh, it's going to be reasonably accurate at least. Firstly, I wanted to talk about two of the biggest fundraising events for Star Citizen Never, and they are both in 2020. Fleet Week in May and the currently wrapping up 2950 Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. These were both ship sale events held over a couple of weeks where players could also try the game for free and try lots of different flyable ships for free. There were some events and things going on, and I'm going to be throwing a lot of numbers at you now. The 31st of May this year saw what has now become the second largest single day in crowdfunding, getting almost 2.26 million, which is almost as much as the entire Kickstarter funding the project originally got. And the whole of Fleet Week made 12.7 million, with May's total being around 15.5 million. That's a lot of money. The Intergalactic Aerospace Expo saw these totals broken, with it making around $16 million itself, and that brought up November's um, total amount to almost $17 million. The best month for Star Citizen funding it ever has had, almost doubling November 2019's total. It also saw the highest earning single day of the project of $2,509,654 on the 28th of November. That's the day the Perseus concept sale went live. This mighty large gunboat, along with all the ships being sold, is why the events have done so well. It is Star Citizen's monetization model, it is the way they fund the game, and it is one of the ways that the game has done so well. This is a huge amount of money to fund the development of the game. For some context though, that's not as much as games like WoW are making. I remember it making 1.2 billion a year WoW at one point, though that's um, a fully finished, constantly updated popular game that has a massive player base. I think it was around 10 million active subscribers uh, a few years ago. That player base fluctuates massively with the release of expansions and WoW Classic, but I do digress there. Star Citizen, by comparison, is a buy-to-play game. No subscription required, though there are voluntary ones, and there are almost 3 million player accounts in total, though not all of those are going to be unique players. However, Star Citizen is still an infant, and even so, it is actually looking to hit over 1 million unique players having played in 2020. And lots of people are buying spaceships, which is, as I said, how they are funding this game. And you can even buy those spaceships in-game now, with in-game money, so it's an interesting thing. I actually think them uh, allowing all the chips to be more readily purchased in-game has helped with the funding. So, how much has Star Citizen actually raised in total then? Cloud Imperium shows their accounts every year, though it's around a year in arrears, and that shows some other various incomes that are not included in the funding tracker, that being subscriptions, so backers paying a monthly for access to the Jump Point magazine, some extra in-game flair, and to help support videos and community interaction like AMAs, Inside Star Citizen, Star Citizen Live, etc. We also have incentives, partnerships, and other, so this could be a mixture of deals like uh, with Intel, with the Optane Drives and the Saber Raven promotion, AMD with the Mustang and Mega game packages, but it can also be tax breaks, rebates, incentives and a wide range of things. And this is in addition to private investment. So on the funding tracker, we have what is currently showing as 334.5 million to date. We know that the private investment amount is 63.5 
to $5 million from the Calders, who invested in two rounds, one of $46 million and another of $17.25 million. We have to be a little bit more creative with subscriptions and the other income, and we'll have to estimate. So we only have accurate figures for these until the end of 2018. So I'm going to assume around a 10% increase in the yearly amounts for um, 2019 and 2020. I'm also removing the month of December from 2020 because we haven't had that month yet. So that puts the total throughout the years so far in potential subscriptions at around 21.7 million and other income at around 46.3 million. So by my estimate, Star Citizen has been funded to the total of around 465 million dollars USD, probably more like somewhere between 450 million uh, and 470 million at the end of 2020, I would say. Give it a little error of margin there. So this total looks like it might have already been adjusted for any refunds as well, because in October 2020, they had some mysterious mystery money being removed from the funding tracker of around $2 million. This funding isn't going to waste, though I suspect some people would directly disagree with that statement. Um, what I mean is, is that it's being used by Star Citizen, Cloud Imperium, to hire more developers, staff, and make their games, Squadron 42 and the Star Citizen Persistent Universe. Cloud Imperium now effectively has six studios, with around 600 staff focusing on Star Citizen and Squadron 42. So there are two studios in the USA, that's Austin and LA. We have two studios in the UK, Manchester and Derby or Derby depending on how you want to say it though the Derby one is very small and one in Germany Frankfurt and a new one announced in November and headed by Turbulent in Montreal Canada this new studio has one of its major focuses being the building out of star systems and gameplay area you want to know how Star Citizen is going to build out 100 and 120 plus star systems in our lifetime? Well, it's building another dedicated studio for that. They plan to grow that new studio to over 100 people in the next three years. Also, Cloud Imperium have been building up a marketing department over the last couple of years, which is one of the things that they were using that private investment money for, which may have helped pay dividends with funding. But I also suspect that this will be used for a push of Squadron 42 stuff in the near future too. When it comes to how much Star Citizen is spending, we don't actually have all of the costs. Again, uh, we only have some relatively reliable figures up until the end of 2018. It is a lot harder to estimate those costs as well with the expanding nature of Star Citizen hiring loads more devs and uh, there's new studios and stuff. We'll have more of an idea on that once Cloud Imperium release their 2019 accounts and we will look at those uh, at some point as well. But it looks like Star Citizen is pretty healthy financially. That funding is not drying up. Cloud Imperium had a reasonable amount, uh, a good amount of cash reserves, especially with that private investment. They seem to be doing pretty well. Star Citizen is a beast of a development and funding model, and I love the project. It is really interesting. It is sometimes dramatic. It is sometimes sort of awe-inspiring. It is sometimes a little inefficient and slow and frustrating as well. And it may not make as much as a released game like, wow, but it's still a little growing baby boy. Well, it's more like a eight-year-old now, but that's besides the point. I just thought it was an interesting subject and some interesting figures to discuss there. So I genuinely think that Star Citizen could get 750 plus a million before its release date in crowdfunding if you include money from potential Squadron 42 sales as well after uh, that game's release. It could be over a uh, 1 billion, but that's just wild speculation at this point. And uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what's going on. When will Squadron 42 release? Well, we don't know. Squadron 42 shouldn't be too far away, but Star Citizen's Persistent Universe is optimistically an end of 2024 release, in my humble opinion. Uh, but we'll have to see, or at least something very close to a beta. Um, but what do you think? Do you think those figures are reasonably accurate? Um, you are more than welcome to disagree with me, and I will link the sources down below. Is the amount of funding for Star Citizen reasonable for a game being built over multiple years of its scale. It is a unique development to be sure. Do you think that Star Citizen could hit one billion dollars or more in funding before its release or is that ridiculous? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. 
Ho, ho, ho. Merry Shipmas. We're giving away a Mercury Star Runner in December because it's Christmas and we do it every month anyway. Zin, put a Mercury Star Runner in my hand. Because that's what we're giving away. And put a hat on it, like a Christmas hat. There you go. That's, that's animation for you. Potentially, I just move my hand around. So just comment on any one of my videos during the month of December to be in for a chance of winning that. Also, maybe give someone special the gift that keeps on giving. I'm talking, of course, about NordVPN. Links below. Also, don't forget Shadow. They do cloud-based gaming stuff, so you can get that as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Click the YouTube join button, like and subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. Thanks for supporting the channel. Merry Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Christmas.